Everyone thinks because you're a zombie, you don't know good coffee. Well, they're wrong. There's only one brew that gets my seal of approval. Deadly Grounds coffee is my guilty pleasure. The aroma is so intoxicating. It brings all of my neighbors out of the woodwork. Deadly Grounds coffee. Coffee to die for and zombie approved. It's good to get a little deadly. Use the front door! Oh, they're so disgusting. It's Tuesday night, which means it's another live Wicked Horror Show. I'm Kevin, and as always, I'm joined by Tony Has Nine Fingers. What is going on, people? And Tony, would you like to introduce our very special guests? Sure. Uh, we've had them on before for Slash Lorette Party. Today we have them on for uh, Murder Side Films, Paul Ragsdale and Angie De Alba. How are hey, you? Hey. Thanks for having us, guys. guys. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Thanks for yeah. coming on. It's yeah, we uh, really enjoyed Slash Lorette Party, and like you always seem to, you know, you have your, uh, you know how to how to pull off the uh, the old school cheese, which is fun. Um, but this one, uh, <laughs> I, I was describing it. I was describing it to someone last night, and I was like, what What it looks like it's going to be is like a James uh, or a Jane Fonda video, mm -hmm. like with 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 horror aspects. And, yeah, it's uh, like your Linnea Quigley's horror workout. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, I'm just I'm just thinking like as a kid, like just watching all these yeah. videos with like leg warmers. It's like okay, oh, those, those, there's so those, many leg warmers. Oh man, but yeah, what where, where were the points of leg warmers? I don't even understand it. But I don't know. Legs get cold. I guess. <laughs> it's your ankles. It's just ankles. Yeah, your um, it's called fashion. Yeah. Oh, it's that's shin. what it is. Oh, well, let's uh, fingers crossed those don't come back into play because then Tony will be wearing them, and we don't want that. Um, Not even I don't wear them already. Well, it's true. I've never I've never seen your feet. So good point. Um, I don't have any other purpose? <laughs> yeah, I was I was actually watching. Uh, I just recently watched uh, Night of the Comet. I don't know if you guys know the movie Night of the Comet. Oh, yeah. Yeah. There's one uh, one of the uh, scientist ladies is wearing like this one piece like uh, science like suit, but she's also got leg warmers on at the same time. So I'm like, <laughs> I'm like okay. But it if you're working, but if you're working out, the more the more like clothes you wear the more calories you burn i guess at that point in time because yeah. you just have really like, sweaty ankles yeah to right? to sweat. Hey, the more the more yeah. you sweat right sweaty wrists yeah. sweaty head yeah. All yep with well, those uh yeah exactly yeah the wristbands and the uh, <laughs> the headbands and the wristbands and uh those all uh, those uh those stark white reeboks as well let's not forget those oh, um, yeah. yeah those were still a thing when i was uh when i was younger yeah I, I was i was able to get those Reeboks for every main character. In really? The yeah. It That's was hard funny. to find them back when we went on eBay and I got the ones with the strap. I was <laughs> going to say that we have the Velcro uh, strap. Yeah, yeah, that works. So Sergio's saying hi. Um, hey, and we have up? a comment from Matt. Uh, hey, Paul and Angelo, we're really excited about it. Hey, Matt. What's going on, man? Cool. Yeah. yeah so uh, speaking of murder size, uh, would you like to possibly give a little uh, description of what the, uh, you know, obviously it's you're doing an Indiegogo right now. Yes. So you're still funding. Um, I think there's maybe, what is it, like five days left on this campaign? Yeah, this is the last week. It ends on Sunday. It might bleed into Monday morning, but Sunday is the final day. Um, it's going really well. Um, we just hit 12.6K, which is the highest yeah. we've ever we've ever earned <laughs> yeah. for, for any film. So we're really excited. And it's the, the most support we've ever received. So yes. this is the best um collection of friends and supporters that have come through many many new people that we we met during the making of the campaign that we didn't know previously so really i'm very very grateful uh, for everybody coming out and supporting and wanting right. to help us make this movie i know it's exciting i'm sure i'm sure that the other movies like you know they're it's like kind of like a proof that you guys know what you're doing mm -hmm. so yeah that's the thing oh, yeah. so with with oh. that it's just like okay yeah i want to support and that's the one thing as as we all know uh horror fans are the most loyal fans yes um, yeah. they also get kind of honorary at times but they're still very loyal <laughs> um but uh as long as you're in the good graces you're good um but yeah as far as the idea for this one uh how, how did you come up with it uh so we i've always wanted to make a 80s aerobics kind of horror movie i, I love killer workout you know death spa like i said linnea quigley's horror workout 
And we had a, a, a short, a trailer that we had done a long time ago called Dance Till You Die. And that was on the Cinco de Mayo uh, movie. Mm -hmm. uh, it was like a, a fake trailer. And that has a little bit, kind of, a little bit of aspects of aerobics. So it was more of a dance um, movie with zombies, right? <laughs> so we never made it, though. And a lot of people really liked it. And um, they were asking us to make it. Uh, we just never did. It's never got around to it. I was like, well, I, I like the idea, but I wanted to go full on aerobics, you know, like like Killer Workout is, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so I was like, well, maybe I can do something with that. And this was during um, the pandemic where um, we had a break. We were making a uh, slash rep party, and then um, we had a long break before we could finish it up. So I started writing scripts. Um, I wrote three. Um, one of them I'd been working on for a couple of years previous, and I finally finished it in 2021. Um, and I wrote a vampire script. And then I was like, you know, it's December. I want to write a script where I don't think about too much. I just let it go, just let it rip, because the other ones it take into either two years, like I said, or <laughs> like nine months. Mm -hmm. So I was like, this December is the end of the year. Let me see if I can get a third one to close the year out. And uh, that was Murder Size. And this one, uh, the, the title came first. Um, so I was like, well, I got to do something with that. Yeah. And I was like, I know I want to do something with exercise, right? Um, and so I just tr wrote it. I I wanted to, like I said, uh, use killer uh, workouts inspo, but I really like uh, Sleepaway Camp 2 mm -hmm. as far as like the, the killer, um, Angela, um, being, you know, the main character. And it's not a mystery who the murderer is. It's her, mm -hmm. you know, and you, mm -hmm. you kind of follow her and you, you, you identify with her. At least you're supposed to as the main character. So I wanted something like that. So I, I had a storyline where there was a girl, she's making a sleazy horror, uh, not sleazy horror, a sleazy workout video and it's being financed by some like mob guys. And uh, she's not the cover girl, but like she she wants to be, she dreams of being like a role model for kids everywhere. And she's really taking it seriously. But the, the workout video is just like I said, like a sleazy cash grab. And yeah. um, the main uh, cover girl ends up going missing. So then there's a, an opportunity for her to become the cover girl and she meets a mafia princess who's being put into the video because her dad's bankrolling the whole video and it teaches her teaches the main character name is phoebe uh about the art of murder and how to get to where you want to get how to get to the top using <laughs> mafia tactics and so oh, yeah. she starts employing those in trying to secure her way to being the cover girl of this workout video that she thinks is going to build her career Nice. So following that and following the, yeah. uh, of course, the tribulations of that. <laughs> now, sorry, go ahead. Tony, you were saying something? Yeah, I was about to say that uh, you have that, I guess, the, the split in some horror movies where one, you know who the killer is the whole time and it's yeah. just following their, you know, murder spree kind of deal. Yeah. And then you got the other one where it's like, who is it? Like, yeah. who done it kind of deal where, so like you said, at this point in time, it's one of those, I'm guessing, especially in the 80s. Yeah. was prevalent those like turn your brain off just watch just entertain and so you don't have to worry too much about it so that yeah. i think that's what draws a lot of people to like the 80s the 80s cheese movies so yes i'm guessing that's what it's going to kind of revolve around kind of deal yes yeah. definitely i think one of the main themes in most of our movies is that we try to make them just fun mm -hmm. they're over the top we know they're over the top um questionably silly um but very campy and yeah. that's intentional because i mean i think for us you know we grew up in the 80s watching all the 80s movies and that's what makes us nostalgic about those old movies mm -hmm. is that they were just so fun yeah everything was crazy and there was just crazy characters they wore crazy stuff they said crazy things yeah the best and lines. that's just what makes <laughs> it fun like a lot of them sometimes you're like that doesn't even make sense but we love it anyway mm -hmm. oh yeah yeah, I agree with you 100%. There's, there's a lot of very quotable movies from my youth that are horrible movies. Mm. But oh, yeah, like, but we still go back and continue to watch our old favorites. Oh, yeah, classics. totally. Yeah, yeah no one's going to tell me that Ghoulies 2 isn't a great movie, okay? <laughs> yeah. It's one of my favorites of all time, so. I was actually, this is a parody, but I was actually thinking student bodies. Um, I yes. don't know if you're, and, oh, like, yes. I have friends that, like, literally we say, like, regularly sometimes Malbert P's Red. We say it. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just like, don't know why, but we do. Um, yeah. Yes. It's, it's, a few weeks ago, again, that was, oh man, so great. It's such a so, weird movie. It's actually on Blu-ray. It is on Blu-ray. It's like a double pack with something oh, yeah. else. Like, I found it on Blu-ray, so because of that, I sold my uh, my DVD of it. 
Um, but I, I mean, oh, good restor restored version of student bodies. That's all I need. Yeah, Olive, uh, Olive Films actually put that one out. But oh, did like, they? yeah, yeah going, going with that, it's like a lot of the movies that I remember like a lot are those like ones that people look at and they're like, this, this movie's a crap. You look at like <laughs> Troll 2. Troll mm. 2 is probably one of the worst movies ever made, but it's so remember like Killer oh, from Outer Space is one yes. of my favorite movies of all time, yes. and it's just so ridiculous and over the top. There's other movies from then; they were good movies, but I'm like, I, they kind of blend into each other, and you don't remember yeah. it as much. Killer Clowns from Outer Space, I'm just like, I remember everything that happens. It's so ridiculous and over the top. Oh, yeah. So it all depends on the people, but I, I'm yeah. definitely with you know the '80s cheese and the '80s just over the topness that I, I, I I'm and we need it. I mean, yeah, it like. There's a lot of stuff out there that's very dark and, you know, as far as like horror movies and stuff like that, you need a little breath, you know, here and there. And one thing I was going to I was going to mention, we're talking about all these movies we loved as a kid. We would yeah. go to the video rental store and like look for the craziest cover. And that's what we would rent. And hopefully we would love it. Now. Yes. Now it's all streaming. And like a lot of your stuff is on Tubi and Amazon. Yes. So it's the same deal. People are just scrolling through looking for something that looks fun. Yeah, and maybe that's how the people found you for uh, the Indiegogo for this. Who knows? Not yeah, I, we, I did hear a, a few people um, recently. I, I had a, a, a girl, um, I think her name was Beth Loves Horror. She just found our movie just scrolling, like you said, scrolling through a streaming channel. She did a review. She didn't know who I was or knew my tag name or anything, but I found it because she had hashtag slash right party. And I said, oh, thank you, you know, for the uh, for a great review. She said, oh, yeah, I loved it. It was so good. And then uh, she started following me and saw the murder size. She's like, man, this looks really awesome. I want to support it. And then she ended up contributing some money to, to murder that's size. Awesome. And so that's great when someone could just find you. And I, I found a lot of people like, cause like I said, people that don't know who I am, but they'll hashtag the movie and I'll go there and I say, Hey man, thanks for watching it. And they'll become my friend and then they'll yeah. become a supporter. And then hopefully think of me next time when, whenever we have our next movie out. Yeah. yeah, it's nice at this point that we've built up like a little catalog that people can go out and watch our stuff so they know kind of what we're about yeah. and they can find us on social media if they want to. And we're really interactive with anybody who wants to talk to us oh, yeah. or I mean, we're always open to even ideas if people are like, oh, I would love to see this in a movie. I mean, we take everything into consideration because ultimately we want the whole experience of watching our movies to be fun. Yeah. And right. even though the stories like Slash Lower Party, even Streets of Vengeance, if you really like dig into the story and the plot and the character stuff, there actually is some could be considered controversial subject matter there. There's yeah, some subversive stuff that if we you, try to put underneath. Yeah, you know, but we don't want to beat people over the head with our our message or our politics or our points of view or mm -hmm. anything like that. We're, it's there if you want to dig deeper into it and kind of do yeah. a character analysis of, of the people in the movie, the characters. But if you don't and you just want to enjoy it for a crazy over the top, someone gets their arm chopped off movie. Yeah. yeah. That's what it is. Yeah. Cause, we've, yeah, Cause we've had reviews on both ends. Like uh, someone will really, really get deep into it. And then the other ones just like, I like the, part where the girl got stabbed in the back with the machete so yeah that's great yeah. i love both and i, and both. I, I just want to say i do i really do appreciate that you're not trying to force because there's so many people just forcing their views on everything down everyone's throat i'm like i don't care like i don't want to have this conversation i want to just know you as a person like i don't yeah. want to uh you know i have uh, you know i but myself i have friends that we don't agree on a lot of things in life but that doesn't mean they're not a great person it doesn't yeah. mean they're not going to make a great movie. I don't. Yeah. I mean, I don't want to watch a movie either. Either way, if I agree with it or don't agree with it, just don't shove it down my throat. Give me exactly. something fun to watch, and if I read into it that way, then that's that's what it was meant to, you know, be done. You know, exactly. Yeah. We All wanted right. to walk that line to give people a chance to go back and watch our movie again. Either, and we've heard this comment, which is like so mind blowing to me, but. Some people say they watch our movies. They just like to have it on in the background. Like it's mm -hmm. one of those movies that they're like, oh, I just like having it on. The kills are fun. The characters say funny stuff sometimes. And it's just like a fun background movie. And other people watch it to do like, oh, I didn't catch that last time. And now I see, you know, people are starting to like dig deeper into the character. And they're like, I didn't realize that she had like mental health and i didn't even notice that that they were commenting on this it's not until i watched it the second or third yeah. time 
that I'm even catching these little. But that, that's that's awesome though. Like that. So yeah. like with with movies like I know again I just bring it up, but movies like Student Bodies that was a movie yeah. that I would have on in the background yeah. just because it's noise. You know, it's something to yeah. be there. So that's that's big that someone likes your movies to the point where they're like, all right, I I want to have something that I enjoy on that. You know, I'm gonna take a second. I can look at the screen, and I know I'm gonna like what I'm seeing. Kind of deal. Yeah, so that's, that's yeah. huge. I think it's awesome. Yeah. I'm very grateful yeah. for that exactly. to be considered in, into that kind of a realm. It's an yeah. honor, really. It's, yeah. It's so awesome. Sergio's asking a question. Um, and you guys were on before, so I know you've answered it before. But I'm gonna I'm gonna twist this question a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, so you normally ask what your favorite horror movie is, but do you have a movie in this subgenre of horror? Uh, or around that this sub genre of horror that you would consider an inspiration for this movie, in like the workout horror, or just subgenre? just in general, or even just like the campy '80s uh, mm -hmm. style stuff. I mean, I know you, you've already brought up a few, yeah. Uh, but I don't know if you both share the same the same movie, or if there's one that influenced each of you differently. Well, I mean, for her, she's only seen like the big ones because I I'm starting to show her like like Friday the Thirteenth and like Child's yeah. Play. Well, actually, I don't know if you guys. I thought I saw my mom pop on here and yeah. yeah. <laughs> hey. Hi, mom. If you're yeah. still there. <laughs> but I usually say this in interviews that I actually did not grow up watching horror films. I'm actually so not knowledgeable yeah. in the field of horror. It's crazy. Yeah, she wouldn't allow her uh, her mom. Yeah, my mom. <laughs> well, well, she. Thank you, mom. She didn't want me to be traumatized. She didn't want us to be traumatized by scary stuff. So mm -hmm. I didn't watch the big classic stuff of the 80s, which is probably for the best because my imagination is crazy. I would have like <laughs> paralyzed myself. But um, the cool thing is, is that Paul has seen everything. I haven't. I So now he just loves like going through the catalog of everything. He's like, oh, my gosh, you have to see this. You have to see this one this one and so he That's loves fun. getting to watch old movies through my you know yeah I'll watch her, like, you know, even still because you know because <laughs> paul was, was was like you were like a kid when you saw these movies and with you know with, with angie now not being a kid like not that you're old <laughs> but i'm just saying you're an adult so yeah, full grown you know, look, looking, yeah looking those like looking at these movies through in a like a grown adult's eyes you may take something completely different out of it yeah. so Right. You know, that that's and then also too, like, you know, we've seen a lot of everything. So it's we're kind of jaded, I guess, when it comes to <laughs> horror. And there's not there's not much that scares us anymore. Right. So no, in your eyes, you know, from from an outsider standpoint, you're like, oh no, that's terrifying. Like you can you oh, can yeah. be like, no, that's scary. Um well, actually that's what's funny because the other thing is not only it's not like I wanted to watch horror movies and I wasn't allowed to, I was kind of relieved because I'm a huge chicken. Like <laughs> yeah, I'm I mean, such a wimp when it comes thank to, you for not letting to anything this. scary. <laughs> I know I'm so bad. Like my mom's saying that she couldn't handle them either. She was too scared. Yeah, yeah exactly. See, yeah, yeah. so it must be hereditary. I'm yeah. such a wimp. I can't you handle, watch hereditary. Like yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm not gonna watch hereditary. What? Yeah, you got it. Can't no, no, no. Really? You don't think so? The wire scene. No, no. Like, though, there's there's like so much more to that movie, though. <laughs> it is. I like it, it a lot. It's great. Um, it is great. Yeah. I'll but... hear it secondhand. But I'll <laughs> <laughs> oh, hear it secondhand. I'll take your word for it. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I'll take your word for it. Well, he he gets a kick out of like, oh, I wonder how she's gonna react to this, and he'll show me trailers of stuff. And he showed me what was that trailer of Freddy where he's his arms were like oh that, that's part one right now. Yeah, the first one. one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He showed me the trailer, and I was like. <laughs> screaming i'm like oh my god what is wrong with this what is wrong with his arms why is he like that what why is his face like and he mm. loves being like i totally forgot that like a newbie would like mm. interpret it that way like, it's I funny because when i see that scene i'm yeah. like wow they could have done that better like they, like, <laughs> I, like the arms are just like they look kind of cheap you know like mm -hmm. when well, i was a kid i was like oh my god this is crazy so you haven't have you have you not watched the first nightmare on elm street i don't no. I, I might have years ago, but if I did, you're gonna I you're gonna miss a bed. young Johnny Depp getting pulled through a bed. Yeah, uh, I'm trying I to show her the death scene. At I least, was already scared but... just from the trailer. He yeah. was like, "But this is what? so good." I'm like, "It's a lot of fake blood in that scene." Um, oh, yeah. those great. are great. Those are great. Like that, I would say the first three Fridays. I mean, oh, yeah. uh, Fridays, Nightmare on Elm Streets are probably where it's at. After that, they just get kind of cheesy, in my opinion. That was pretty good. Four yeah, but good. three, like I think the one through three, three are like solid from beginning yeah. to end, like just really, really good. Um, I, did, I did show you uh, Night of the Creeps. That's a that's a fun horror movie. Yeah, that's the one with the 
the aliens and the, they drop that cancer of slugs and it goes oh, into like yeah, <laughs> dead yeah, bodies yeah, into yeah. the zombies. That is so gross. Yes. I know, <laughs> yeah. So I know nothing about horror films. I've watched so so few that I could probably count them on one hand. But I, I think that's what I know, and I'm surprised the indie community, I mean, the horror community, embraces me anyway because I know nothing. I, to be honest but, with you, I, I think I think that's probably a plus because I think they're gonna be like, oh, you need to see this, you need to see yeah, this. They yeah, they want to be the yeah. first person to, to uh, like you know recommend a movie to you. Yeah, because um, we all have our favorites, right? Tony, but what horror, are you gonna say? You, uh, horror community, it's different. It's weird because you have your gatekeepers, which are annoying. That are like, oh, well, if you don't see this movie, then you shouldn't be considered a horror fan kind of deal. But then you get the other side that it's like, oh, well, you if you like this, you got to watch this and watch this. And, when, yeah. and, it, and it brings out the, the fun of like exactly. horror movies because then it's like, oh, well, then it, it, like you were saying, it brings back the memories and brings mm -hmm. back, oh, I, I totally forgot about this movie. Let's check it out together or whatever. Yeah. yeah. You, know, sure. you, got, you got the gatekeepers that are just yeah. like. Oh well, oh, yeah. if you didn't see this movie, then you can't consider yourself a real whore. You need to sum it down, dude. Like so that, that's the thing is, th there's a lot of movies out there that terrify me that are not considered <laughs> horror movies, but they're not considered horror movies. Silence of the Lambs, people consider that. I mean, I I think that's terrifying. I think Seven yeah. is scary. Like, in Seven oh, is not a horror awesome. movie at all. But yeah. um, Sergio saying he wants to see the trailer. I do have the Indiegogo trailer. We'll show that in a little bit, <laughs> and then we have Matt saying that uh, Snatchers is a really fun horror movie that isn't scary at all so there's oh, stuff really? out there <laughs> i'll be the but, judge of that <laughs> no there's, there's stuff out there that you scares have... me <laughs> so so paul are you a fan of the movie may may is With that angela um, bettis i haven't i don't think i've ever seen that one i love that movie Where she um, gets, uh, bits and pieces it's... from all the people and... yeah she basically is creating her she's... monster kind of thing right, right like exactly she's creating her her perfect boyfriend kind of deal um yeah. it's it's really good it's a movie that i think a lot of people don't know about um it's one that's never got a blu-ray release it's one that i totally recommend and it's not scary it's just, i always want to see yeah, yeah i always see the dvd cover like because I, mm -hmm. I i used to I, I love shopping for movies i always see it every time i pass by it's like oh, i should need to check that out you check that out you should, i recommend it oh, I would, cool. uh, yeah it's it's a good time but there's a lot out there um so actually texas chainsaw massacre has no blood in it or anything right. like that it, even right. though it was banned from like everywhere it's there's no it's all implied you don't see right. anything it's just so gritty and realistic and yeah. i showed her the trailer of that too which is like oh my god <laughs> it's my favorite yeah, that's yeah, my favorite it, but it's so <laughs> effective it's so it's so it's a masterpiece i know i think yeah. that's what when people like get to know me better or people who do know me they're like you make slasher movies <laughs> you don't know anything about slasher movies you're the girliest girl of all time and you're making horror films yeah, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. There's, there's a lot of uh, actors and actresses that we've talked to that aren't into horror movies, but they're like their whole catalog is horror movies, but they're not really into horror movies. It's like mm -hmm. yeah. they just take the work where the work is, and it's like they happen to be pulling it off really well. And maybe it's better that they that they're not big horror fans, you know? Well, the thing is, uh, being on set, it's I know, and people are like, "Well, if you're so scared, or like, how do you make them?" It's not scary to make them. It's different. It's, yeah, it's so fun because they're your friends. And you're just like slathering them in blood and you're like oh my god look at your fake arm hanging up it's funny so yeah. on set it's just a fun time there's nothing scary about it and i mean drew marvick is our friend now i mean seeing him as a killer i'm not gonna be like oh my god i'm scared i mean it's true so yeah. yeah it's totally different when you're on set and you're making the movie so i can make slashers and thrillers all day every day for years it's fun to make mm. them but watching them is like I'm, I'm scared. <laughs> yeah. I do have to say there, I did have one experience on, on a movie set that I actually was scared. So uh, oh. it's not like that for everyone. I was a guest to the movie set. I wasn't making, I wasn't part of the movie and we were uh, me and my cousin Leo and our other friend, Tony were in this hallway of a, of a prison, a, a dark hallway. And they were filming nope. a riot scene. Uh -huh. it, this place, it was all peeling paint <laughs> and everything. They were filming a riot scene. And then we were waiting in the hallway like for the director or whatever. And then all of a sudden Kane Hodder came up looking oh like God. he was ready to rip our faces off. And he just threw a hammer into a, into a chair and just like kept walking. And I was like, Holy crap. Like, <laughs> like that. And that was before I ever got to yeah. meet Kane. Like it was my first time ever meeting him was in that hallway. And then I, then, then I got to interview him in the prison, like a, a little while, like an hour later. And he was the nicest guy. So, Amazing. but they, they, they all were saying like, he gets into character, so he's going to be intimidating. Sound. 
So, yeah. Um, but yeah, but that was that was terrifying to me. But I was also in an old creepy prison. So what are you what are you gonna do? Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. See, yeah I think one time we were in a location that was haunted. I think, he's right? tried. He's tried to pitch me stories where it's like, oh, we'll film in this abandoned whatever. No. Abandoned butcher shop or something. No. Or abandoned <laughs> hospital or something. I'm like, well, you guys have fun. I'll be outside like watching through the monitor because. Really. Can't. I'm scared. My my wife and I used to plan our vacations around haunted locations. We would like go stay in haunted inns like by ourselves. Like that it would just be us and like there would be no other rooms rented and they would just give, give us the free reign of the whole place. Wow. It was a uh, mm -hmm. yeah, it's good times. That's awesome. I need I wish I was more brave. So I like, I, I don't know if I'm necessarily brave. I'm probably <laughs> just, just dumb. I'm probably breathing in all this stuff I shouldn't be breathing in. Um, yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> um which sounds um, like fun. They're, they're asking, uh, oh, we'll yeah, have you seen uh, have you seen Hellraiser? Oh, oh, Giovanni. Hey, Hi. Giovanni, what's up, man? Oh, come on, Hellraiser, give me a break. I, I, I remember seeing that as a kid. And I being probably scared. passed and out watching it as an adult. It was still scary. I have it's not very seen uncomfortable. The one where the guy has like the pins. all the pins. Yeah. yeah, I'm traumatized just from his picture. It's scary. Yeah. I want to see the well. What about? What about that? They're rebooting it. They're rebooting it, and because in the books, Hellraiser was actually like a female, um, really? and in the in the reboot, it's gonna be a female pinhead. So there yeah. you go. Yeah. yeah, and part two had the Cenobites, and uh, I thought that was pretty cool. Cenobites. Yeah, 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 like, yeah, yeah. I, <laughs> those, I think they're I think they're scarier than than Pinhead. What's I think the, the Cenobites are scarier than Pinhead. Uh, they're like his the, minions. Like, yeah, his minions. Yeah, his 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 cohorts. And they... are they like monsters or? What? Yeah. Uh huh. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. They're pretty scary looking. Like their their faces cool. like like stretched out. as one guy? Ew. Like, face was just. <laughs> yes. Do you watch Do you watch um... Rick and Morty at all? Because there's actually a, a a parody of Hellraiser in an episode oh, really? of Rick and Morty. Oh yeah. Like the oh, Cenobites awesome. and everything. They're making fun of uh, the the husband and I don't know. It's a uh, it's a good time. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. Well, one horror movie I did show you that you did like was Demon Knight, mm -hmm. and that's a fun one. Which one yeah. Oh, Jada Pinkett. Oh, yeah. That was cool. Yeah. yeah. Oh, Billy, I mean, Billy cool. Zane is just an amazing actor. Yeah, Billy Zane. Yeah. Crazy. That, that one's a fun one. Oh, I saw Child's Play Dawn. for the first time. Child's Play, yeah. yeah. What would you think of it? Oh, my. If I would have saw that as a kid, I would have been traumatized. <laughs> <laughs> it's not so, you look at you like... not so bad now as an adult, thank goodness. But, man, <clears> that thing is... I didn't realize like his story or like yeah. any of the stuff. And I was asking yeah. Paul, before we watched it, I was asking him so many questions. Like, why does so he kill It's a living doll. It's like, well, the soul of a serial killer is inside. I was of like, it. how did his soul get in there? He's like, well, like a voodoo man. I'm like, what? Yeah. A voodoo man does and stuff. And now to... there's a doll named Chucky. Yeah. He's like, well, his name's not Chucky. It's something else. And good guy. Are the yeah. Good guy. Dolls, yeah. yeah. Well, that, like... that's the thing is when I was when that movie came out, like the big like one of the big toys for kids was uh, my buddy. My buddy. Which yeah, was basic, yeah. Which was basically the Chucky mm -hmm. doll with with a different wig on. Exactly. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it was just like, wow, they're really just trying to mess with people here. Yeah. That's, I, that's, why like that's why I like it. That's why I like it. Oh, totally. Kid. Yeah, because like we had, I had my buddy doll too. So. That thing was intense. And then like when he goes under the couch, <laughs> and he comes out, and you're like, oh my god, he's gonna talk. He's gonna talk. <laughs> yeah, when you first hear him speak, she was like busted up. He's like, you bitch. I know. <laughs> like, <laughs> you're like, well, yeah, he cusses. <laughs> I know. Yeah. He cusses. He's a dumb ball. Yeah. You got. You got to see. If you haven't seen Poltergeist, you got to see that because you under I, the bed. Okay, you did see it. Yeah. Yes. So the Terrifying. clown. That's that's oh, yeah. still. I so that clown still gets me. Like every time I watch, I'm, I know it's coming. I can almost tell you exactly, like the, to the to the beat on when it's going to happen. I'm still like, oh no, it's coming. <laughs> I'm like, Shit. you know, yeah. That okay. and that's the reason why I get scared to like leave my like if we're already in bed and I'm like, oh, I want a glass of water, but I'm like, nah, I'm not going to go out because I'm so traumatized of like coming out and seeing the chairs. Like, yeah, that's the way that. The chairs. Yeah, yeah. That's why you don't turn the lights on. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh! No, it's no, going no, to no. Dark. no, 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 no. Can't see it. It's not scary. Looks like, with, uh, like your mom. Your mom's saying ghost. she had a nightmare with Poltergeist. So oh, I don't blame yeah. you. <laughs> yeah. When I was a kid, oh. the whole peel in the face thing oh, really got me. It does not hold up now, but when I was a kid, it looked it looked so real. Um, oh yeah. We anyway. actually one of the first horror movies we saw in a theater. Um, you and your mom, we went to go see uh, Paranormal Activity. Okay. Oh. 
thinking? I don't Which, even know what we were thinking. I was surprised because I thought it was really good. And my sister, Sean, she loves horror movies. She watches them all the time. She doesn't so get scared of anything. Nothing. But that she was scared of. She yeah, was so scared of yeah, the uh, the uh, in the pool stopped. scene, the, the the skeletons that were popping up, they were real like medical oh, yes, skeletons. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, I heard yeah, that. yeah. Because <laughs> from what I understand, it's cheaper to get a hold of them than it is to get what? fake skeletons. Like a yeah. human, like a real human skeleton. Yeah, yeah. The one in the in the swimming pool scene when the when the daughter got like in the swimming pool and the the, mm -hmm. the skeletons were popping up. Oh, oh my god! Yeah. They're like wild now in the eighties. Oh my. Well, god. yeah. Well, that was Poltergeist. It was it was that was another the, Toby. That, that was a. Um, yeah. Same director as is uh Texas Toby Chainsaw Massacre. Yeah, Toby. I Maddox, mean, so. honestly, if somebody wants to do something with my skeleton for fun, donate to the movie business. That's, that's what they <laughs> were acting. <laughs> they have the whole uh cursed uh shutter had like cursed uh films or whatever, and yeah, Paul yeah. Price was one of them, and they were saying yeah. that that could have had a uh, a thing to do with the whole they said everybody on the set was getting sick and yeah, the character, well, yeah one of the characters that, died. That, that character that was in the swimming pool scene got murdered by a stalker. Mm. Um, and then the little girl ended up dying of like a kidney disease. And then I think it was the second one. There's like an old man who's like coming up to the screen door. He's like, you're going to die. Like whatever. He's just like, and he was, he was in the process of dying of cancer. Like he was, he's, he like wanted to do the movie, but he was literally on death's door while making that movie. Oh my gosh. Um, but it's one of my favorites. I love it. Isn't that what they um, say the exorcist too? Like a lot of the people had crazy yep. stuff with, Accidents and yeah, you know, dying, you, know, you yeah. know what? Maybe we should start exactly. Watching. See, Nicholas, <laughs> Nicholas agrees, he agrees with us. Um, yeah, enough off the, off, off the subject of uh, of all these other movies, we're talking yeah. about uh, murder size. <laughs> I want to, yeah, yeah, I want to play the Indiegogo promo so uh, they can just go to Indiegogo and do a search for murder size, yeah, and um, you can you could uh, you know, put your put your money in there, and you know, there's a lot of cool perks and stuff like that. <laughs> Maybe uh, even be uh, what? What are the, what are some of the perks? Isn't there like uh, some IMDb credits as a producer or something like that? Yeah, you can be associate producer. Uh, you get your name in the credits, and uh, if you go high enough, like a code Zach, you get it on the box and the DVD box cover and stuff. Um, there's one, uh, I think, one role left for a self-recorded uh, cameo role. I think Tony. I think I think we you got one of those. I believe. No, oh, will be another one. How's that? I, I think I put it for the Blu-ray. I usually just oh, do Blu-ray. Blu okay. So there's one left. So if someone wants to do a self-recorded, um, you know, uh, cameo role because there's a movie <laughs> within a movie. Um, you know, we're doing VHS again this time. Not as many as before. Um, so it'd be very rare. And I want to try to do slip covers. And so, so I'm really excited about the artwork we're going to have coming along pretty soon. Mm -hmm. Cool. Well, I'm going to play the uh, Indiegogo promo and we'll be right back. All right. There you go. All right. Oh, thank yeah. you, Matt, for posting the uh, link in the comments there. Matt yeah, Skinner. Thank you, Matt. Nice. We should also have it uh, pinned up top as well for anybody. Yeah, watching. it's going to be in all the notes. So even even yeah. though it'll be over by the time it gets up, um, unless you guys do in like another one, I don't know. But um, when the audio goes out next week, it'll be in those notes as well. So people can still go and take a look to see what was there and what they yeah. missed out on. Then they know that they have to keep an eye out for the next one. Exactly. <laughs> I'm just talking. The other thing I, I, I must say is the just from that little trailer, it seems like you're gonna because I know one of the other hosts that we have, Wolfie, uh, always gets annoyed when you have it, like a movie set in a certain time and you have stuff that doesn't go with it. So mm -hmm. you you get in the the shoes and like the workout outfits and even the music. Sounds like mm -hmm. it would be placed right in the eighties. Sometimes you'll see a movie and it's like, well, that's not supposed to be there. Like <laughs> I never really understood what he got 
into until I yeah. saw a movie. He's that a little, he's I, a little too much though. Like he's just like <laughs> that car came out in this month of this year, and there's no way they would have had this car. You know, it's like you need That's to sit it down. It's a, it's a movie, right? Um, we need to hire him to help us. No, because then you would end up going broke just on like, <laughs> correcting things. Um, but uh, as far as the music goes, was that something that did you like hire someone to do that, or was that just music that you were able to find? Or? Uh, that was uh, composed by Vestron Vulture, our Yay. longtime composer and friend. He did the score to Cinco de Mayo, Streets of Vengeance, and Slash That Party. Mm -hmm. uh, so he'll be doing the score for Murder Size as well. Um, we have a few other uh, composers that are coming on. Uh, the Grind Theory, he did a couple of tracks for Slash That Party too. Uh, so he's coming back. But yeah, that was Vestron Vulture. Um, nice. Love that guy. Yeah, Dante. And then uh, even got a Yellow Walkman. So 80s. Yes. Oh. Yeah, yeah, he's talking Sweet. about our first shoot that we had on Sunday. Matt knows what's yeah. up. Yeah, we had a yellow Sony Walkman. Um, yeah, somebody already tried to question us on the authenticity of the yeah. 80s, and we see it on the thing. We'll show it. It's made in the 80s. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, that's totally yeah. 80s. It's yeah. totally 80s. Um, I even put a bunch of stickers on it to make it look more 80s. <laughs> the, the only thing I would say is, like, 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 whenever I think of, like, the cassette Walkmans, I always think of, like, because I would listen to them way too much. And then the batteries start to go, so the songs would just get a little bit slower, yes. slower and slower. But I would still just like I would take the batteries out and move them around to see if that helped. I didn't know I was a kid. Um, Switch them up. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. And then uh, I, when you would upgrade to the CD Walkman, and I would have to like when the batteries started going that, I would have to hold it completely flat. I'd be like on the school bus or something, holding it completely <laughs> flat because I didn't, I didn't want like I didn't want it to skip. But, um, working the magic on it. Oh, totally, totally. Yeah, <laughs> precarious. Oh, yeah, yeah. I yeah. did that at a sleepover once, and when I was a kid, I had one of those tape Walkman things, and I like fell asleep, like listening to music, and then I woke oh, yeah. up, and it was like, and I was like, oh, oh my god, this, is, god. this explains the nightmares. Yeah, um, yeah, traumatized. See, yeah, a little, little, devil. little chicken. That's that's oh. actually an idea for a movie set in the eighties. And have it be like a uh, like maybe like one of those bands that they're like oh this band's satanic and you whatever yeah. but the, as the as the uh, the batteries start to die you actually hear the satanic message <gasps> I don't know backwards messages oh yeah I love that so, like, yeah something like that <laughs> right into your ear I ain't yeah, messing with one. the devil no <laughs> yeah, we anything devil yet. no he's tried and I'm like no I ain't messing with the yeah, devil. I think that's all right. <laughs> now you brought back uh, the same composer it, it looks like you have a few uh, actresses from your previous movies. Yeah. Uh, who did you add to the, the the mix? So the familiar faces that came back and Nina Lene Kent, uh, she was in Slash Art Party. Crystal Shea, she was in Streets of Vengeance and Slash Art Party. Victoria. Victoria, she was in uh, Streets of Vengeance. Mm -hmm. So this is our first time working with her in a long time. It's good to have her back. Mm -hmm. Of course, Drew Marvick, Ginger, Ginger, Ginger Lynn, they're coming back. Mm -hmm. uh, Luis uh, Maya. And the new people, uh, Brian Hurd, um, from uh, Streets Street of Vengeance. Vengeance. So the new people that we have and what we're excited about is uh, Jordan Phipps. Uh, she's the lead actress of Close Calls, uh, written and directed by Richard Stringham. Great movie, awesome movie. And uh, Jessa Flux, I think is her stage name. Uh, she's been making a lot of rounds, uh, doing a lot of movies um, with Sean Donahue. They have a movie coming out, Satan Lives. I believe she was in uh, Deadly Dealings, Adam Freeman's movie. So she's been getting a lot of uh, credits lately. She's just traveling around. And so we were able to get her, and she's going to be playing Candy, mm -hmm. uh, the cover girl of uh, Murder Size. And we tape. just we just shot with August Kiss. August Kiss. On Sunday. And she's so sweet. She's an official 80s baby as well. So she's like, I had these clothes when I was yeah. in <laughs> So she came all the way from Canada. So that was yeah. awesome. To, yeah, yeah. To collaborate. Yeah. yeah, and this was like one of her first movies too. So yeah. it's really cool nice. to get them round four. So where, where are you, just out of curiosity, because Sergio is asking if anyone's ever gone to Eastern State Penitentiary. Where are you guys located? Like, where are you guys? You guys are, are West Coast? Yeah, yeah. we're in Central, California. Central California. Mm -hmm. We're, like, right in the center. So we're kind of, like, in the middle of, we're equally distanced from Sacramento, San Jose, San Francisco, Oakland. We're, like, right in the middle. Yeah. Nice. Nice. So they haven't been Eastern State Penitentiary, I'm assuming, Sergio. No. Um, mm -hmm. I've been... Yeah. I've been by it. It's in Pennsylvania. I've been by it and it was in the middle of the winter. So I didn't, I couldn't stop. I was there for work, but, uh, scary. but yeah, it's no, it's they've, they've done all these like ghost shows there and uh, uh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. No. it's fun. What, what um, state are you guys located in? I'm in mass and he's in New Jersey. Oh, cool. Oh, yeah. East coast. Two states yeah. I've been to yet. I gotta, we gotta head well, out. 
the, the fun thing is, is that I live in the same state as Salem and I'm not that far from there and I've never been. Um, <laughs> and I've lived here my whole life. Uh, so uh, eventually. Uh, so St. Lives looks cool. Um, and then yay, Canada. Yeah. yeah. And then Sergio's saying that Eastern States got real ghosts. And I agree, they do. Um, a lot of places have real ghosts, I'm sure. Especially this part of the country. We're very old. Yeah. You know, I know. Uh, oh my gosh. Now the, the one thing we were talking about is uh you know uh cover art to a lot of the stuff, but the other thing I, I must say for you guys is the titles. We always talk about you know names getting changed <laughs> and all that stuff, and mm -hmm. a lot of your stuff catches the ear, like Flash the <laughs> Red Party definitely caught it, Murder Size is definitely one that it's like I would have checked that one out for sure, <laughs> but it's it, it's definitely a thing that nowadays it's like you hear a name and it's just like right. okay but that's mm -hmm. one thing too in the 80s you get these names that it's just like even if the movie whatever it's like i gotta check it you gotta because see it. It's just that name so yeah. it, you said that was the first thing that came to your mind before the story was the title is that yeah. just something you're just like I, I gotta call it this or was it like did you have to think about it for a while or how'd that work yeah. So yeah. So like when I had the title, I was like, oh man, like I need to come up with a story for this. And like I said, I was at the end of the year. So I was like, okay, I want to write a story. I don't want to think too hard. I just want to jump in and just go with first instincts. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I throw on killer workout and watch it just to get into the vibe, you know, get into the zone. And like I said, uh, Superweight Camp 2, I'm trying to get into that zone. It's like, okay, I want to do something like this. And it maybe took a few days. I, I have the original notes to so just writing down ideas. I wrote the title, Murder Size, and I wrote down. It's actually a little bit different than what it is now. Um, it's funny to go back and see that. Mm -hmm. But yeah, just like, you know, just loose notes and just trying to think of what would the storyline be? Who would the hero be? Originally, the hero was going to be, you know, like an actual heroic person that, you know, <laughs> that would stop the murders or something. And I was like, no, no, let me make the protagonist, the, the hero, so-called hero, anti-hero, the, the murderer in this case. And uh, see if I can do something with that. I've never done anything uh, with that before, except for um, Secret of Mayo. But that was more like a revenge kind of a thriller, kind of rolling thunder kind yeah. of a thing. Slash um, Florette Party, we, we said it almost as a joke. Because yeah. when we made Streets of Vengeance, uh, we shot it in a way that had uh, two fake trailers that played in the middle of the movie, like an old school kind of drive-in experience. Yeah. And so Streets of Vengeance had a break in the middle of the movie with two fake trailers. And one of those fake trailers were like, oh, let's just go classic 80s cabin in the woods, mm -hmm. whatever. And so we were trying to come up with something, not think too hard about it. Because we're like, we're not really going to make the movie. It's just going to be a fake trailer. Yeah. And so we're like, Throw oh, away. and, you know, we're like, oh, what can we do with I a lot of like girl, you know, yeah. the stuff that people like in movies. They like a lot of pretty girls and. A like guy aesthetics, killing them, a guy, hacking them up. That people love Cabin in the Woods. Maybe I burnt up. And I was like, but why? And of course, my brain has to like think about it in real terms. Like, why would a bunch of girls be in a cabin? And so we're like, oh, well, let's have them do a bachelorette. And we're like, mm -hmm. but who does bachelorettes in the cabin? We're like, that's the point. So mm -hmm. yeah. the story is the main character like complaining about why are we in a cabin? Why aren't we in Vegas? And mm -hmm. that's part of the one of the characters. But um, we were like, okay, so if it's a bachelorette party, what are we going to call it? And we're jokingly saying all these like the corniest things we could think of, like tell death, you know, tell death you part or scream now or mm. forever. Hope. And we're like, Oh, slash lyric part, like joking around. I'm just, I'm just no. saying those other two titles are not bad. Like, they're, like they're, all three of them are solid titles. I mean, I think Slash Lorette Party is probably the most solid of the three. But the, when you, as you were saying, those other ones, going, that's a solid title. That's a solid yeah. title. I would, I, I would look at it. I would check it out. Yeah, yeah, we actually turned them to the into the taglines. Tag now, forever, rest in peace. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. I think they ended up being taglines on our posters. Yeah. On the t-shirt too. Slash nice. Lorette. Oh yeah, party. there you go. <laughs> I threw it out there as a joke, and he was like, "I love it." And I was like, "No, I was just kidding." So here we are. <laughs> and it's also so that's that's one thing too. Like with the, with the whole trailer thing, I mean, some of the coolest movies have come out of fake trailers. <laughs> yeah, you know, so that's well, that's good. Yeah, well, that was, never uh, to make it. It's called Machete. Wasn't yeah, Machete yeah. A, mm -hmm. like a yeah. fake trailer, and then they're like, "Oh well, we definitely need to see this," and then that, you know, came to came to be. 
Yeah, I'm glad you that. Robert Rodriguez. Yeah, we were yeah. waiting for that. That's kind of what happened to us. We made the fake trailer for Slash Lorette Party. And then over the years, people were like, but where's Slash Lorette Party? Mm -hmm. And we're like, that's not a real movie. <laughs> and they're yeah. like, why not? Like, make it. I want to see that movie. And we were like, no, that was just a fake trailer. And over and over, like, people kept commenting on, like, but where's Slash Lorette Party? Mm -hmm. I want to see that because they liked the fake trailer. Of course, they like, you know, we put nothing but kills in it because it's a fake trailer. It was supposed to just be entertaining. There was the high points. There wasn't really any story to it because it's a fake trailer. So like Machete, it's like all the kills, all the fun, crazy all stuff. The action. So then we're like, oh, crap. Now we have to write a story for this fake trailer. <laughs> and so after people just like asking for it and asking for it, we're like, OK, well, if people really want to see it. I guess we'll make it. So yeah. Give it to the people. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. I mean, and again, it's, there's been so many. Like, I know, like with uh, the movie Found, uh, they had like a, a little scene from a, a fake movie called Headless. They ended up making the movie Headless. Oh, right. Um, and then I, th I want to say Turbo Kid. The movie Turbo Kid was from one of the ABCs of Death. Uh, it was T for oh, Turbo. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It was like a little right. short, and then they ended up making that to a full length movie, which is awesome. Yeah, but uh, Kung Fury Two, I think, was a oh shooter, possibly, and they turned yeah, into oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's yeah. been a lot of like just really cool ideas. So that's that's another way to go too. You should just make some random trailers, and then when it, you're, you're gonna know your your fans are gonna be like, "Well, you need to see this next movie." You're like, "All right, that's our next project." That's that's the what we're audience. Do next. Yeah, yeah. Not the fake. Stuff. Yeah, there there are, I already do have a fake movie within the movie of Murder Size that because the, <laughs> the main character is like, "Oh, I was in a horror movie. I'm gonna show you guys like my scene or whatever." So that's already gonna be in there. And mm -hmm. I'm already thinking of maybe making like a special feature on the Blu-ray and making like a little short film or something. Movie, so, yeah. so I don't might, might do that. <laughs> that's because see if people want to turn to feature. We'll see. That, that's that's the other, and we we talk about it. Tony talks about it all the time. One of the things that we like about physical media is the special features. Yeah, you don't get that with streaming. Um, yeah. So now, are you guys you guys do self distribution or do you have a uh, uh, do you have distribution? This... For the for the, for the slash Rare party, this is the first time we did self distribution. Okay. Um, so for Streets of Vengeance and um, Cinco de Mayo, that was released through uh, all of film slash video. And so, with from our experience with those experiences with those, we decided to go, you know, full independent. Um, we are in talks of having slash Rare party distributed um, maybe next year. Um, mm -hmm. We're still in talks about that, like doing like a special edition with like. Um, different special features and like, uh, you know, all kinds of stuff. But I mean, it's, we're still in talks. It's like, still yeah, early. yeah, yeah really, the only reason I was asking is because Tony had mentioned like, you know, keeping the names and like the like cool names and not changing them and stuff like that. Because yeah. we have seen that where like someone will get distribution and like, oh, yeah, we don't like the name. You know, we want you to change it and we want you yeah. to like it just it, it kind of stinks. You know, yeah. it's your, it's your oh, art, you know, thankfully yeah. we haven't had to do that. No, the people we've worked with have been really awesome. Yeah. Really awesome. They let us keep like the the artwork and everything, and um, you know, but the solid artwork. Yeah. I mean, it's there's a reason. It's solid yeah. artwork. Yeah, you know? yeah. Like, even posters. even the poster for this one, the poster for this one. I'm like, this is sick. Like it's same same artist. Brutal posters did the slash art party, and he also did the murder size teaser poster. Yeah. And so I'm really really grateful to have him. He loves our stuff, and we love his stuff. And um, we're gonna have an official poster once we shoot the movie and get you know. You know, stills of the actors and stuff. I have an idea of, of how I want the official poster to be, and I'm really excited when he does his magic. Yeah, yeah, on that. yeah. Yes. It's gonna be on the same vibe. I, I I'm assuming because it's yeah. very I'm 80s. More of a flash dance vibe. I don't know if you're familiar oh, okay. with flash dance cover. Oh yeah, yeah. Something along those lines. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. Awesome. Now with your movies, because Paul, you know, you are the horror aficionado and angie still like do you bounce each other like ideas off each other because it's it's you have like okay angie your idea of horror might be a little bit different than paul like is that how everything kind of comes into like you have like you were uh, there's some people that bringing texas chainsaw massacre back up there's people that legit think there's blood and guts and gore everywhere but there's really not so some of those might be like first time viewers and they think they see yeah. something that's actually not going on. So in your eyes, Angie, horror might be one way and Paul. So is that how you guys make like like is it 
a mix between it's like the middle between yeah. or yeah. Um, like uh, that, yes. that's what makes our movies unique i would say is our sensibilities because they are different um and instead of me like stepping over the line on what she's good at and her stepping over the line on what she's not too familiar with mm -hmm. we're like okay you do this and i'll handle this we'll come together and, and bring it all together and see how it coalesces or how it mixes and that's you know kind of the secret recipe uh, to what we do like she doesn't have to know anything about horror and i don't have to know you know anything about fashion or clothes <laughs> i just have a rough idea of what you know they look like and she has a rough idea of what the vibe is and the tone is and and we go in it that way and uh the end result is uh like i said it's just because what you know and what you don't know you know really makes a difference well I, I feel like. the thing that's kind of interesting about our <laughs> dynamic as a creative couple is that he'll like pitch this idea to me even with real movies that already exist he just likes to say a title of something and he's like what just hearing the title what do you think it's about and i'll make up like a whole fake story and he's like that's not even close to what that movie is <laughs> <laughs> and so he kind of likes to like just give me I, rough ideas of something and I'm like what would you think if you heard the word murder size what, what's that about mm -hmm. and we do that like word games all the time where i'm like i imagine it would be this and he's like wow i didn't even i did not think that at all and mm -hmm. vice versa so we definitely bounce e ideas off each other constantly especially when it comes to characters because i mean i don't know if people have picked up on it by now but our a lot of our films are very female driven so a lot of female characters and honestly i mean no shade to the guys but sometimes you can tell when dialogue's been written by men and you're like oh, totally girls don't talk like that they somebody would very rarely is do you hear women in in slashers speak like real women would say mm -hmm. so i think that's another thing that if we're writing dialogue together that's something that we do together mm -hmm. as well we're like they wouldn't say that like mm -hmm. or i'll tell him st stories about like oh my gosh my friend and i were talking about this and this this and that and she said this and paul's like that's hilarious i should write that in a, a script yeah so <laughs> Yoink. yeah i just took that put that in my pocket yeah no, that, that's <laughs> awesome no that's that's great and you, that's a very good point um you know there, there's a lot of women in horror but there's not a lot of at least from what i've noticed in credits there isn't a lot of women horror writers so right. yeah. that's a very good point i never even thought of it that way um yeah but no, that's that's awesome. So I, that's that's another thing that probably sets you guys apart too. That makes the the movie a little bit different than the other stuff that's out there. Yeah, is that yeah. it's not the typical like, you know, just cheesy lines. It's you know, yes, yeah. People so really Paul's talk. Usually, the one that comes up with like the heart and like the core idea mm -hmm. of like what's inspiring him because he has that knowledge and that history of like all these films that have inspired him and some. He wants to pay homage to various like directors or scenes or whatever actors um and so he has all that background but then trying to put it together i'm usually the one that comes and brushes Grounds his hair and it. put the bows on it and, <laughs> and puts the makeup on it and makes it nice and pretty so yeah. we kind of balance each other out in that in that way so yeah. everything that he writes is like a rough draft and then i'll read it and then i'll add my stuff or there's been a lot of scenes that I add that I get so proud of because people say like, oh, that's my favorite scene. It's so funny. Mm -hmm. But it's because I'm adding something unhorror to a horror movie. So there's a scene in Splash Loyal Party with Drew and Ginger. And you guys have seen the movie, right? Well, oh, know. yeah. Well, it, there's oh, yeah. a scene where Drew's like talking to Ginger, Ginger and he's saying how some girl, yeah, his therapist. And he's saying how some girl was rude to him and he was trying to offer his granola to her. And she, <laughs> anyways, that whole scene, like their whole dialogue, that's a scene that I wrote. And then the end when they're doing their thing and they have their like blazers and he's doing his like speech about the 401k. Mm -hmm. I wrote that scene for him as well. And so many times people are like, oh, my God, I loved Drew. Like at the end when he's talking about like how he likes taking walks mm -hmm. and making his own organic cocoa or something. Yeah. And uh, people love those funny scenes. And oftentimes those are the kind of things that like are, are something that I contributed because I don't know. That's more my sensibility. Yeah. Yeah. Paul's yeah. The one that's like, and they'll get beheaded. I'm like, oh, <laughs> yeah. 
Okay. <laughs> well, that you know, again, like there's there's some people like Tony had said that you know that some people just want blood and guts from beginning to end, and yeah, <laughs> there's really no substance to a lot of that stuff other than like really talented visual effects artists and stuff like yeah. that. But yeah. you know, I don't know if if I if me and my friends were in a in a situation we like if we're in an uncomfortable situation we use humor to get out of it you know yeah so that's the thing is that's that's more realistic exactly you know? oh actually this uh, you guys probably will think this is funny because there's a scene in slash Laura party where they're like expecting a stripper to show up mm -hmm. and the they open the door and it's the murderer dressed in that jumpsuit with the axe or whatever and one of the girls says oh shit it's jason myers like she says it wrong yeah and that's based off of something that I said because right. Paul was telling me something about some movie. I was like, oh, who? Jason Myers. He's like, that's not even, it's Michael. It's not Jason. That's a different guy. And I was just How like, How do you get that crazy? I was just like, no, no. I don't like, know. Like, Started Michael. punching out windows. You're like, what? Yeah. No. <laughs> like, Freddie's arms are always that long. What are you yeah. talking about? No. Um, well, he thought that was so funny. He's like, I have to write that in there. Like, yeah. clearly, a girl who has no clue what she's talking about. It's like, Jason that's Myers. Great. I'm like, oh, gosh. That, yeah. I mean, that that is pretty great. I mean, <laughs> it's. Based now when I when I rewatch the stuff, I'll have to like think of it that way. Like this is written yeah. by someone who doesn't know horror movies, so that's, that's crazy. Part of it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so we're just about time to wrap up. So, uh, you know, besides, well, the Indiegogo, you guys are all over Instagram and Facebook and all this mm -hmm. other stuff. But so, do you want to just give uh, for the people that are watching, and then the people that are going to watch later on during the week, and then the people that are listening next week? Uh, where where uh, your your handles everywhere? Like where can people follow you? Yeah, we're on Instagram uh, AP Films A underscore P underscore Films. That's where we're at mostly posting our updates. Uh, of course, Facebook Paul Ragsdale, um, AP Productions on Facebook, um, the Murder Size Movie uh, Facebook page. I'm posting all the updates there too. Uh, we have a Making Murder Size uh, group Facebook group. Um, really loyal, dedicated guys there, people there supporting us. Uh, but yeah, we'll be posting all of our updates and behind the scenes stuff on all those platforms. Um, don't really use Twitter very much, but um, I'll try. I don't think anyone does anymore. <laughs> like Tony always gives his Twitter handle in his, his rundown, but he's like, but I don't really use it. Like, Why do you even say it then? Like it's, I don't use mine either. Like it's, I don't even know my login. <laughs> it's like a repetitive thing that it just always, yeah. I always say it, so. It's just yeah. out there. Yeah. Exactly. So yeah. so that's all your handles, you say? Yes, yes. All right, cool. Tony, what about you? Uh, you can find me at Tony Has Nine Fingers on YouTube, where I do movie reviews, unboxings, anything movie-related you'll find on uh, there. I should post a little bit more. i got to get back into it. Uh, but Tony Has Nine Fingers on Twitter, which I hardly ever use. Uh, <laughs> there it Tony is. Tony Has Nine Fingers on uh, TikTok, which I do not twerk. That's, I, do I made that joke like once or twice, and he says that every time now. So, <laughs> uh, uh, Tony's movies on Instagram, where I do show off the uh, movies behind me. Uh, here on the Wicked Horror Show every Tuesday, uh, whether we have awesome guests or uh, it's just a horror movie talk or conversation. And of course, check out the Wicked Horror Show Instagram where you could see previous guests or anybody, well, not really anybody that's coming up because usually it's a couple days before, but, you know, the awesome thumbnails that Kevin makes so you could see what uh, uh, what guests we had on before. And uh, that's really about it. Well, what not, I, if you want to sell uh, sell some stuff, I just got a uh, seller's license, I guess you want to call it, or I'm able to sell. So that's uh, pretty cool. And uh, that's really about it. Noise and uh, yeah. for myself. Oh, by the way, your your TikTok, which is blowing up, Tony. How many how many subscribers are you at to now? Almost sixteen thousand. There you <gasps> go. Yeah, wow. for real. For a guy who doesn't twerk, you know, you'd think. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Not yet. But he, yeah, he does. He ends every video. He's just like, all right, I'm going to buy. Make it clap. He just says that <laughs> when he uh, stands up. Um, no, but. Uh, so for me, it's just a knuckle on Instagram. Uh, besides doing the show here and doing the reviews with the Thirteenth Wolfman over on the audio side, I'm also part of Black and White Fright, which is just uh, you know classic horror. And then another movie, another show that I do that reminds me of you guys is uh, called Violence Buffet, where we have a friend who's not seen anything, and uh, we try we show him the most violent parts of a movie and we just try to get a reaction out of him. 
Oh gosh. So, I yeah. Like I oh yeah, yeah. It's good times. <laughs> I know. Yeah. Is the homework for me? Like a recommendation? Well, what I need to watch? Yeah. there's uh, that's the thing is I would probably ruin you. Um, so. <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure Paul could as well. I'm sure Paul has like a library of things that he knows. He's he's like, I have to live with you, so I'm not going to do that because I need to sleep as well. Um, a lot but, of uh, tea. Yeah. Um, but uh, I'm also a producer on a uh, new show called All Our Yesterdays, which is another uh, it's a '80s, uh, well '70s and '80s uh, pop culture podcast. Go check that out over on Facebook as well. Thanks for listening slash watching, and go support independent horror. And uh, yeah, goodbye.